just look at it it's going up why is it going up it's obvious why it's going up gold is for war you know the, the price of gold in the bubble phase and don't be confused about that being permanent could be quite high could be quite high and i i i would not we're going to be three thousand soon and then we could quite easily see five thousand where are the biggest risks to the bull markets that we're seeing right now New all-time highs for stocks, new all-time highs for gold. What are markets signaling? Clem Chambers is back to break down what's next. He is the founder and CEO of A New FN. Clem, welcome back. Congratulations. You've got a new title, new website, new venture. You'll be telling us about that. Thank you for being here. Yeah, well, I've been away from financial platforms for private investors for a couple of years and uh, had lots of ideas. You know, like when you take a little bit of a breather, you, you get all those shower thoughts come into your head. And, you know, after a couple of years away, we thought, right, we come come on in and turn everything upside down. Because if you look at a lot of uh, financial platforms at the moment, they're old. They're 25 years old and they look 25 years old. And it, I, I'm not a big fan of people that say, oh, you look so old fashioned. It's not the look. It's what they do. And what they do is is so old fashioned. So we've had a few, you know, um, sudden um, epiphanies good old epiphany we like her and um we're going to be bringing in lots of exciting stuff that will put a little bit of fizz back into this um private investor landscape well congratulations let's see if the market's having an epiphany right now new all-time highs this week uh for the s p you know you remember when you were on the show two months ago early august there was a big meltdown in the financial markets uh yen reverse yen carry trade spooked everybody Money piled into Japan. Um, bad day or bad week for Asian equities as well. Things have more than recovered. Now we're at all time highs. How are you reading what's going on right now? Well, the way that I I look at it, my big model is the central banks won't let markets crash. In the old days, they'd be so fast asleep. By the time they woke up to the fact that you know the tsunami was coming up up the main street, it was all too late, and they were basically sweeping up the debris. These days, they look for everything that might turn into a, a bad day on the market, might be a crash, might be even a bit of a big correction, and they're in there quick. So when the a carry trade Japanese thing kicked off, that they moved in really fast and stopped it. So there's this, well, it's what's government's meant to do? Government is meant to be there for security, right? That's the first law of government is um, security for its people, which is why they do borders, which is why they have armies. And financial security... That's also a thing. So, you know, the regulators are there to stop um, systemic default. And those moments of systemic problems, they come around every couple of years. Regular as clockwork always have. But they've got really good at stepping in and, and stopping the wheels coming off. And they did that with the, the banking crisis of um, last year. They've done that with the Japanese carry trade. Um, and, you know, they are kind of on top of all these things so there's a, there's a little bit of a copper bottom under things but i do think that they don't want anything nasty to happen up until the election and i think that's that's key so we've got these all-time highs but the market isn't going bananas there's not a runaway trend if anything it's kind of holding it in stasis and to the election which is not that far away now of course comes up i don't think you'll see anything major occurring in the main markets now I don't count gold as a major market these days because the turnovers in in um, the futures market and all those markets is quite small. It's quite niche. So you can get um, interesting moves. And I think we're seeing the continued gold rally, which I think is going to run and run. I really think it's going to go quite a long way. Yeah, let's let's come back to gold because that very, very important moves. Twenty seven hundred dollars uh, announced this week. I'm going to flip it flip over to my screen here. This is a this is a. Um, a viewpoint that I've gotten this sweep from an economist or an investor, rather. So the claim here is that we are now entering a revival of the early 1970s, where the Fed funds rate was falling at the time, but didn't really stop inflation. Now, as you recall, in the mid 70s, there was an oil crisis, uh, but inflation did spike up again. And in the mid 1980s, uh, Volcker had to raise the interest rates to double digits. And now, what's happening right now, Clem, is that just today, we're speaking on Wednesday, October 23rd. The Bank of Canada cut by 50 basis points. Um, central banks around the world, uh, for the exception of maybe Japan, are all cutting rates. And so people are concerned whether or not this this seemingly coordinated effort of easing is going to stimulate global inflation, which is which is to say we're going to have a revival of the 1970s everywhere right here. 
Okay, well, my model is is relatively unique, okay? And they can stimulate the economy. They can, um, you know, print magic money. And they'll be fine. They won't generate inflation because they know how to not generate inflation now. And they also know how to get it out of the system. We had that run of inflation because they printed money absolutely like crazy during COVID. And they also did it in a certain way, which does generate inflation. And that is to hand out money to every level of society. QE doesn't do that. Printing money like they did during COVID will do that. And they really didn't have much of an option. They they know, they un- completely understand the sort of inflation that was going in the 70s. That That's so over. If we get it again, it'll be for a different reason. Now, they do, a higher than normal level of inflation is required, but they are not looking for runaway inflation and they're not looking for hyperinflation. They will have a slightly elevated uh, rate of inflation and it'll be where they want to put it. And it's going to be between three and 5% for a long time. Are you liking this video so far? Well, video creation is challenging. So let me tell you about today's sponsor in video, which is changing the game for video creators like me. And if you're a content creator, and then listen up. I know that creating videos can be complex, but NVIDIA AI V3 changes that. With new generative capabilities, you can now create full-length, publish-ready videos from scratch using simple text prompts. Whether you're telling a story, explaining complex topics, or creating product ads, NVIDIA AI V3 puts you in control, bringing your ideas to life in minutes. Unlike tools like Sora and Runway that only generate clips, NVIDIA V3 creates entire videos ready for use, and the best part... It's launching in just a few weeks. With the edit command box, you can make real-time adjustments to your videos. Plus, voice cloning now lets you replicate your voice for narration. If you haven't checked out their current version, scan the QR code here or use the link in the description down below to try it for free. Paid plans start at $20 a month, so use my code to get two times video credits in your first month. Get started today. Where are the biggest risks to the bull markets that we're seeing right now? Well, war. And even that could um, be good for markets, depending on how fast it took off. But I don't think we get that. Um, I think, if anything, the risk is in this concentration in the super heavy stocks. And therefore, you know, accidents could happen to an Apple or to a Google or to an Amazon that would have a big impact for a lot of people. It, it, it's come to the point where I have to ask you which war, which is a terrible thing to ask, but I, I, which war are you referring to? Ukraine, escalation there. By the way, just today, uh, it's been reported that North Korea is sending troops into the Kursk region of Russia to fight on the Russians' behalf, which would be an escalation of things, I guess. Uh, or are we talking about the Middle East? Well, you're talking all over. Global tension is rising everywhere you look. Okay, so that rise of tension, you can't point and say, oh, it's going to be, you know, going to be Vanuatu against Micronesia. It just a rising um, tide of of inter geopolitical stress. And at some point. You know, you can get a war. You can get a big war. Well, I mean, the Ukraine war is a big war. There's hundreds of thousands of people dying there. It's, it's, it's not the tens of thousands. It's hundreds of thousands of people there. It could, Russia could lose a million people, a million soldiers in this war. I mean, that's a, that's a massive war. And do, does anybody see de-escalation anywhere? I don't see de-escalation anywhere. You've got Russia running ships around Taiwan. You know, you've got um, – there's just a lot of tension out there, and it's only going to be getting worse – is only getting worse. So something would need to happen to turn around that theme and make a de-escalation. And it's that constant drumbeat of escalation that's driving gold. So you think gold is pricing in more war at $2,700? Okay. I, 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 I don't think you buy a bucket of war. What you buy is geopolitical stress. Okay. And that is what is tension that is rising. Yeah, so it's like the old nuclear clock, seven minutes to midnight and all that stuff. The the actual level of stress is going up and up. It's gone up in the Middle East. It will go up further in the Middle East. It's it's gone up in, in Ukraine, 
and it doesn't look like it's going to be coming down. You've got issues in Moldova. You know, there's there's no de-escalation going on. There's nobody coming out and saying, oh, we all need to be friends now. There's nobody, you know, creating uh, a forum for the release of this increasing drumbeat of geopolitical stress. And if that if that will continue to ratchet up, I'm sure of it, and it's going to be ratcheting up for quite a long time. And yep. that will turn into <coughs> things like the gold price. You know, it's interesting until, because um, until something happens to de-escalate this, to yeah. the change in in the general way that um, the world is um, looking at geopolitics, it's just going to get more and more stressful. Well, and that, yeah, let's talk about that. What could de-escalate this geopolitical stress that we're talking about, which I guess in a way could be a bearish case for gold? Well, that's why precious metal seems to be a one-way bet. There doesn't seem to be anything. I mean, you know, United Nations, I don't think so. I mean, is is Putin going anywhere? It doesn't look like it. Are the mullahs in Iran going anywhere? I don't think so. Is there a resolution in, in Israel and, and Lebanon on the horizon? It doesn't look like it. Is China going to stop, you know, giving trouble to Taiwan? Again, it doesn't look like it, does it? So, you know, it's like it's like one of these one way bets. I'm sorry to say, I mean, I wish I could say, well, you know, of course, um, blah, 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 blah is going to do this, that and the other. But it just looks like it's only going to get inverted commas worse. You think maybe it's pricing, you know, so you think maybe it's pricing, you know, so uncertainty with the U.S. elections, maybe after the presidential elections, things may come down a bit. Well, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, you in in the American election, you're in, between the devil and the deep blue sea, aren't you? I'm sorry to be an Englishman interfering in your election. I, I might get sued by Mr. Trump, <laughs> but um, you know, I mean, who who exactly is going to de-escalate America's position? Yeah, that's a good point. It's interesting how I've had a lot of people on the show talk about gold. Uh, people who are fundamentally bullish on gold for some of the reasons you stated, and yet they they themselves are asking the question whether or not gold's technically overbought at current levels, and it's time for a bit of a pullback. Similar to what they've been asking when NVIDIA was reaching new all-time highs pretty much every single week for the last two two years or so, except for the summer. Um, same question they've been asking about the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. So would that question be fair to extend to gold? You know, noise. Noise is something to be very, very wary of. So what if it pulled back 200 bucks? Yeah, what is the trend? I mean, when I was a little kid, my father was a big spec um, commodity speculator in the seventies, made a lot of money, and I found it quite surprising as a ten-year-old. And I said, "Dad, you know, what's the trick to this?" He said, "All you got to know, son, is one thing: which way the market's going. And if you don't know what you why are you playing?" And I thought that can't be that simple, can it? So anyway, thirty years later, when I got to be in my, well, not twenty-five years later, when I got in my thirties, I realized he's exactly right. Which way is the market going? Which way is gold going? If you don't know, you shouldn't be in it. Yeah, but it's pretty obvious. It's going up. Just look at it. It's going up. Why is it going up? It's obvious why it's going up. Gold is for war. And as geopolitical tension goes up, governments buy more and more of it. And at some point, you know, the the um, private investors go, oh, my God, gold, gold's gone up a lot. I need to buy some. And I'm going to buy silver because I'm buying more of it. <laughs> and yeah, the silver goes another. Silver is another thing. It's at the highest level since 2012. I mean, silver can't be pricing a war now, can it? Maybe it's just tracing in, uh, maybe it's just tracking gold. Look, gold, governments buy gold as a currency for war. And so if tension goes up and they start to sweat a bit about the, the future of security, they should and they do buy gold reserves. You, silver is, is too light. So that's a, that's a a B to C sell. That's a that's a private investor sell, right? So you know, as everybody starts to sweat, you buy silver coins because you know at the end of the day you can't buy a chicken with a gold coin. Well, you can buy you end up with too many chickens, right? So silver currency is for buying the sort of thing that 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 citizens might um, want to buy if they're really worried about what's happening next. Platinum would follow if governments are, are laying in gold because. Platinum has the weight. You see, if you look back at history, it, during the Second World War, they used to ship their gold in battleships and submarines. Yeah, they throw they, the Americans threw the silver into the sea in Manila Bay. They could not be bothered to pack it into a, their submarine. They put the gold in the submarine. They threw the silver into the bay. Yeah, so silver is a is a B to C um, precious metal. 
Yeah, but it does track. And, you know, got silver ratio to gold was 125 not that many months ago. And now it's down to 80 and it could go to 60. So gold could go up and silver could go up double or not double, but more because the ratio gold to silver would go down to 60. And of course, it used to be 40 and it used to be going back 100 or so years, 20. And if you go back to Rome, it was five. But, you know, so every time you dig anything up these days, there's silver in there. So, you know, the production of silver is, is, quite, is quite high. The thing to think about gold is there just ain't that much of it. Now, you might think there is, but most of it's locked up. It's like a, it's like a tech stock where 90% of the stock is locked up. The free flow of gold is not so great. It is actually inflated quite a lot because depending on how you count the free flow of gold and how much they dig up every year, you're looking at one, two, three percent of new gold every year. And that's really where the free float is, because so much of it then goes into illiquid pools of gold. Electronics, illiquid, you can't get it back out again very easily. Jewelry, you know, people don't melt down their rings that quickly. So the actual free float of gold, governments, when they when they put it in a, in a bunker, it ain't ever coming out. Yeah. So the free float of gold is actually quite small in comparison with the overall amount of gold so if you count all the gold in the world up which is i don't know 12 trillion or something like that there might only be a couple of trillion of that actually free float so you know if there was big demand if you go from nice rally thank you very much into a boom into a bubble situation and these things that's how they go boom bubble bust you know, the, the price of gold in the bubble phase, and don't be confused about that being permanent, could be quite high, could be quite high. And I I, I would not, we're going to be 3,000 soon. And then we could quite easily see 5,000. What happens when we get to 3,000? Is that a psychological, that's a key psychological level? Is that the, the, the well, point I, you see, of I, resistance? I, I, I try to just... steal clear of all these human psychology things and yeah. all that rhubarb as far as I'm concerned. But if governments are, are starting to stack tons of gold every month, you know, your gold supply will, will dry up pretty quick. Why why does the government need gold fundamentally? Going back to your point well, about stock okay, gold, David, why are you doing that? Yeah. You're you're the government of of of, of Lynn, okay? And sure, you're fighting yeah. the government of Clem. And I'm okay. winning. <laughs> Try buying a tank. Yeah. Try buying a tank now. They're not gonna take your uh, treasury bonds. They're not going to take your paper. They're not going to take your IOU. They will take your gold. Gold is because for I'm at, war. Because I'm, at, because I'm at war right now? Is that the point? That yeah, you're, you're at war and you're losing. Right. Mm. Who's going to take No one's going to take the credit. Okay. Yeah, they're gonna, they're, they'll take your gold in payment. So you stick it in a submarine and you send it over to, over to Uncle Sam, unload the gold, and he sends you some tanks. What that's if that's why gold is for war. What if there's another alternative? What if I use Bitcoin? Well, go on then. What are you going to send? Tell me what you're going to send. I I would I would send them I would send them a hard hard drive with some with some Bitcoin on it. <laughs> well, yes, but there's not many governments that are particularly enthusiastic about Bitcoin. No, no, I guess not. Speaking of Bitcoin, okay, so gold. Your bull. Let's finish on gold. Uh, so you're bullish on gold. Um, three thousand dollars. We're going to see that soon. You said. Yeah, I think and so. and. And and all that needs to happen for that price to hit for the first time in his history is the status quo. Things just continue yeah. the way they are. Exactly. Okay. Interesting. Bitcoin is an interesting asset. Take a look at my screen here. This is the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. This was brought to my attention. Okay. The Ethereum Bitcoin ratio has been falling steadily over the last three years or so. Okay. It, it, it seems that Ethereum is kind of either losing relevance to Bitcoin or Bitcoin is gaining relevance to everything else. And actually, if you look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, um, it, it kind of it kind of is, um, it, it does look like that Bitcoin is gaining dominance versus everything else. But Ethereum is losing ground. What's going on there? Well, it's people, isn't it? I, the, the whole thing about crypto is that it's all computers. You know, code is law, uh, it's decentralized, um, it's self-custody and all that good stuff. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, there's all these people in the mix. It, it was uh, decentralized. Well, now it's proof of stake. Oh, now we've changed the code. Oh, we've changed it again. Oh, now we've got new rules. Bitcoin doesn't do that. It is what it is. 
and nobody can change it. It's not impossible for it to be monkeyed with, but it is extremely difficult. But, you know, things like Ethereum are getting monkeyed all the time. So actually, you're not investing in a piece of code. You're not investing in Satoshi's white paper. You're 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 investing in in, in Vitaly, um, you know, Butterin's latest great idea. And, you know, that that will it depends on if you're a maxi on it. So if you're a crypto maxi, you say Bitcoin, it is what it is. Don't change it. There's never going to be more than 21 million, you know, blah, 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 blah. Rules are rules. Tough luck. Yeah. Whereas as soon as you get the people in there, as soon as it goes from proof of work to proof of stake, it goes from anarchy to oligarchy. You you know, we, we know what happens next. Right. So, you know, the Ethereum guys, who, who how many of them are there? 30, 40, 50, 100? It's them. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point of crypto is it isn't about them isn't about him or her or government or somebody telling you what to do it's this machine and it has no fear it has no remorse it will not stop yeah and that's the the machine is the law and that's the whole basis of crypto so guess what bitcoin just grinds on nothing changes it is what it is meanwhile all these people running around you get you get your bankman frauds and you get your um you know you get your michael sailors you get this this week's crypto messiah you get the sec messing about you know it, it's just back to politics again isn't it people well that is why all these people driven coins that have organizations behind them that lay down the law and change their minds and come up with new ideas and and change their coin from abc coin to cde coin and this week is this and that week's that you know that they end up making a mistake and then messing themselves up don't they and that's why bitcoin grinds on and is 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 the gold because it is immutable it remains immutable while it does it will have that pinnacle position Meanwhile, everybody else changing the, the rules of the game, saying one minute they won't, next minute they do. One minute it's Fred and next minute it's Bill. One minute the, 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 it's Doggy this, the next minute is, it's Inu that. that. That's much more fragile and therefore they lose ground against Bitcoin. So is there any scenario in which Bitcoin becomes more centralized and perhaps adopts this celebrity model that other coins have taken, like you pointed out? There's no easy way. There's, there's no easy way. I can I can make Clem Bitcoin tomorrow. Yeah, I can literally. I'd buy it. I, I've, I've got. I, I'll tell you some. I, I literally, I'm 25 foot away from a from a crypto genius that could do give me Clem Bitcoin tomorrow. But it ain't the Bitcoin, and all that brand, all that momentum, all that all that blockchain that it is, remains impenetrable. And because of that, and immutable, and because of that, that is where its value lies. And, you know, so far, it's been nobody's. I mean, remember, there's Bitcoin Cash was made. And so somebody forked Bit and called it Bitcoin Cash. And then somebody, then, oh, what's his face, um, forked it again and called it Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. And what happened to those coins? Well, they went away, didn't they? Nearly, not completely, but, you know, yeah, they're, Bitcoin they're, marched they're on. Still floating, floating somewhere in the either. Um, no pun intended. Okay, Clem, uh, finishing off in the markets then. So Bitcoin, how are you feeling about Bitcoin? Are we are we are we are we marching onwards like with gold with Bitcoin? I, I'm like most of your viewers, that the more something goes up, the more enthusiastic I get. <laughs> so which is always a mistake. I mean so it, at it, the it, moment, it, it's it, fascinating to me. Sixty six thousand, sixty five point eight thousand dollars of Bitcoin. It's near its summer all time highs, and yet I'm seeing very little news on Bitcoin right now. It's well, that's good. Low. When things go up and nobody's shouting, that's I always take that as a bullish sign. So I'm not. I was kind of sixty forty. We've seen the top. I'm now back to fifty fifty again, and maybe even a little bit more. Still thinking that it will go through a hundred thousand if Trump gets in, and he sticks to his guns. And I, and he's not exactly a man that changes his guns, is he? Um, then Bitcoin could easily run up. To 100,000 if he gets elected. But, you know, I am incompetent at predicting election results. So, but I, I, I can predict what will happen after they are there. If he is gets that, in, it could be the, the catalyst. Is that to say if Kamala gets in, Bitcoin could go down? Oh, yeah. 
I mean, the Democrats hate that. Democrats hate crypto. I mean, the, you know, governments ha- have always been said to have a, a I think it's Karl Marx, bless him, had, had it, um, that governments have a monopoly on violence, right? But what they have woken up to when the, over the history they wake up to it now and again is they've also got a monopoly over money. They don't want to give up their monopoly on money. I mean, that's the nightmare for a socialist. I mean, it's the, the major tool for manipulation, isn't it? You don't want to uh, make that in the private sector. I mean, you know, before you know it, people won't be doing what they're told. So, you know, yeah. for a socialist, for Democrats or whatever they want to call themselves, social, um, social Democrats, it's a nightmare. They hate that. They hate crypto. But this if you're a little argument. bit more right wing, what's that? Sorry. Yeah. No, I, I, I think, I think you're, you're right in, in a lot of that. But here's here's my argument. Here, um, correct me if you disagree. Bitcoin is politics agnostic, meaning it doesn't really care who gets it, the government. Like you said, decentralized governments have limited control over it and who buys it anyway. You're not going to ban Bitcoin in the U.S. Keep in mind that Bitcoin rallied the most when Biden took office, 2021, right? Yeah, but that was shot up to the moon. That was for other reasons. I'm not saying it was because of Biden. I'm just saying Biden didn't make Bitcoin go down. So Yeah, but, um, but they haven't, if you look from that moment, Amer- the American nomenclature has mm-hmm. tried very hard to crush the living daylights out of, out of crypto, and they've done a yes. pretty good job. Yes. So the thing is, maybe you, you, you might want to moderate your, your axioms a little bit. The thing about blockchain is it's computing, and this is what makes it dangerous, plus politics. Yeah? In the same way as, as a spreadsheet is uh, computing plus numbers calculation and a word processor is computing plus words blockchain is computing plus politics it's what it does it's a set of rules that control a money supply and the the log the lodging of of accounting records and that's what makes it so powerful but you know if you're a a a centralized government the idea of decentralizing computing plus politics that's a terrifying prospect. And that's why they hate it in addition to the fact. Because blockchain is not just about making money and bookkeeping. It can be about a lot of things. But the moment you decentralize that and you have a blockchain and a, and a, and a currency and a money supply that controls that thing, governments lose their, lose their stuff over that. You know, they, they can't have that. They make rules. They make the money. They have an opening on violence. You can't go, you know, decentralizing that. That's definitely not what they want. So, you know, a a government as powerful as America embracing decentralization, uh, computing plus politics, you know, that would be a bit or even just a whiff of the, the fact that it might happen. Because remember, the last time Trump got in, they tied him down like Gulliver, didn't they? They they tied him up. They sued him. They stopped him from getting these policies through. They blocked him at every turn. And of course, that could happen again, couldn't it? But as a catalyst market catalyst a trump victory i think would could give us that bitcoin leg up over a hundred thousand which would signal the high so i've still got my 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 bags as the young people call it i've still got my bags of crypto and um if he gets in and it goes through the roof i will sell and i will i will leave with a smile on my face this this euphoria that we're seeing in these other assets that we're talking about do you think that's going to continue to translate or translate or uh pass into the stock markets s p 550 you're talking about is, is i wouldn't say long gone but it's 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 not actually there it what it has been there there's been some amazing bullish moves over the last 10 years but yeah. we're not really in a bullish um mood right now we're almost i haven't looked at the chart for a few days but we're almost in a sort of you know sideways trading pattern i mean it's you're a big talking one talking about stocks bit, right now a bit time? well yeah but it's 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 all time highs but it's not doing that ridiculous um vertical that we've been having for for years on end almost it seems to be a little bit damped down it seems to be a little bit less uh, rampantly bullish but I, that's not to say it won't carry on Clem, where can we find your work? Uh, great talk. Where can we? Um, you have a well, new if, website. If you want to, if you want to check out what I'm up to on, on the on the financial platform um, thing, just go to a new FN and put yourself on the guest list, and you'll be the first lot of 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 crowd allowed into our, our financial nightclub. 
um so that's that's um a big thrust of, of what i'm doing now and um and you know there, there'll be a lot of interesting stuff to to keep your attention there particularly um u.s markets um stuff as well so yeah that's the thing and you can read my stuff on seeking alpha and you can read my stuff on forbes and um, which i'm a regular i regularly write about um blockchain hopefully a little bit more lucid there than i have been here today while well, you've been Plenty of lucid for us. Thank you very much. Clem. We appreciate your insights. Um, and we'll catch up soon. Check out Clem's new website down below. Look forward to seeing you soon, David.